Hi, Robin with OxyDry. And uh, I've got a fairly small job to do here. Um, and um, hang on a second here. Just tighten up my uh, little device here. And um, it's uh, pretty worn. Uh, carpet's pretty old. They told me 25 years. I find that a little bit hard to believe. It could be, but anyway, you can see um, we got some nasty spots. I think that one is actually a dog pee. They do have dogs. Uh, and uh, overall, though, not really that bad. This room, we've got a set of steps to do. This room here, on the bed. This room here. Uh, not moving the couch, and this one here, which is actually empty. Pre-vacuumed, filled the vacuum. There she sits. Actually, never shook it down yet. So let's have a let's have a peek. At what I got in here. Never even looked at that. Okay. And okay, it wasn't. Wasn't quite full, but that's uh, again as usual, mostly skin. And uh, anyway, I thought I would video this one primarily because of a a, um, a question I was asked about moving the uh, rotary machine on the floor or on the carpet because. Um, if you're used to using a uh, orbital machine, particularly, uh, well, actually any of them, um, typically when you're using them, you're pushing it back and forth, forward and back, forward and back. Moving it to the right and to the left doesn't doesn't uh, work so well. Um, now, when you go to use this machine, let's turn it on, get it going. Um, moving it back and forth as I'm doing right now with my arms, that's going to get really tedious real quick. So what you do is you put, there's my muscle, <laughs> that's it, up against your muscle, and you just step and step. I'm moving it, I'm actually looking, moving it back and forth. Now if you're having trouble moving it on the floor, if it feels like it's binding, there's a darn good chance you're running too dry because I just felt it bind there for a sec and it was real hard to move and uh, um, if you if you pre-spray rather than using a tank which I'm doing uh, and on certain carpets you could uh, run that's when you run the risk of running dry so that's one reason why I suggest and why I use uh, a tank. Now as far as maneuvering, what's happening right now is I'm just sort of stepping back and forth. The machine doesn't leave my waistline at all. It's actually tucked against my body. Every time it moves forward, that's me stepping. Step forward, step back. I just kind of rock. And as I do so, I will lift up slightly. That's going to the right. Lift, push down slightly, goes to the left. There's no effort involved in doing that. It's effortless, seriously. So if you're struggling with moving your rotary, if you've never used one, you're new to it, um, that's what's going on, is uh, you're just simply not used to moving the way that these machines work. Uh, so you basically let the machine do the work for you. You don't put really any effort into moving it. I'm just slightly lifting the handle, it goes to the right, pushing it down slightly, it just goes to the left. There's no effort. Now you can, if you twist it to the left, the machine will pull away from you. If you twist it to the right, it'll push toward you. Because you're basically trying to balance it off the center point of that spinning disc underneath that head. And if you think about it, the disc is turning counterclockwise. So the left side is coming toward you. So if you put the weight on the left side, 
that'll cause that disc to, to pull the machine away from you. And when you slightly lift it, the, um, it, it, the uh, front part up at the front is moving that, that way to the left, so that'll make push the machine to the right. Push it down, the opposite happens. So all you have to do is just kind of balance this type of machine, and it does the work for you. But I suspect that if you've if you found yourself using your machine and you're it feels like it's really struggling to move on the carpet, uh, chances are you've been spraying down. And on certain carpets more so than others, and certain types of pads more so than others, there is a greater chance that you will end up uh, running a little bit dry. And if that's the case then you, your, the machine will bind and it'll be very hard to move it in any direction. And you're really uh, running a risk. That's when you would run the risk of tip blooming. And uh, you do, I mean, you can do it with a rotary, but that's how you do it, is uh, running dry. So you don't want to do that. So that's another plug for uh, using your rotary with with a tank, because as soon as you start filling it binding, you can just immediately pull your trigger, apply a little bit of solution, and uh, you'll be fine. And that's one of the reasons why I like using the tank, is I can feel the, uh, the, um, I can feel the carpet, actually, what the carpet is uh, kind of feeding back up the handle, as it were, to the machine. I can feel the, uh, I can actually feel the, the unevenness in the carpet. Some are, you might have a bump or whatever, you'll feel it. But I can also feel the, uh, the, the grip, the binding. And some are more inclined to do it than others, so. Customer just came in behind me. Looking better already, isn't it? Yeah. Amazing. Couldn't take a little bit of effort, though, I think. Yeah. Yeah, they got a couple of uh, dogs in this house, so one of them's a rescue dog. One of them looks like a, probably a, a yellow lab, I think. So there was a mark over here that didn't look like it completely came out. You can see that. So uh, I did pre-treat these. Um, so we're going to hit that again. That's um, I use. I'm using Argo right now. I didn't pre-treat it with Argo. Oh, there. I think it just disappeared. still see it slightly. I'm using a hog's hair fiber pad. I'm really, really liking these now. I'm using it almost all the time now. Just has a little bit more bite into the carpet and it's really durable. Doesn't seem to be kind of pulling apart like the white fiber pads that I've been using do. So it just maneuvers, maneuvers so uh, easily that there's no eff effort. The carpet is now adequately uh, damp, so I'm not actually ad applying any solution now. There was a bad stain right here. I'm going to do a little extra scrubbing here. I think this one actually was probably uh, dog pee, so I hit it with peroxide. 
I use um, Proxy brand. It's actually pre-mixed, and uh, although you don't want to be dumping peroxide into your tank or into your pressure sp sprayer and spraying it around, that's really not a good idea for lots of reasons. But uh, when I'm dealing with a urine stain or coffee stain, out, that's where I'll use it. So I use it very sparingly. Don't you need to use it otherwise? And I never use ammonia. No need for that. So don't want to be smelling up people's homes with that. That's not a good idea. Not approved for use. I mean, I know you can use it, but it's not a good idea. Even though it's a natural thing, not all natural things are good for you. And if you are in, inhaling ammonia fumes uh, consistently over a long period of time, you will suffer. Let's take a look at the warnings about that. So, and why would you use that anyway? The uh, solution I'm cleaning with it's Nanomax, which is a um, green product. 97% food grade plant based ingredients very safe zero health rating you can't get a lower health rating than that water is zero health rating for ground mode <laughs> and I do I've boosted with ClO2 chlorine dioxide which is a hospital grade disinfectant sanitizer deodorizer Um, it kills bacteria, germs, and viruses on contact. It uh, is a very effective deodorizer, but doesn't add an odor. It's an anti-allergen as well, and it does. It is approved for use against the coronavirus. So, I have actually been using it for quite a while, a couple of years, two, three years, I think. I've been fiddling around with it, and uh, it's now a consistent thing that I do. There's a little mark right there. And now it's gone. It's right on the edge. So, it's playing along the side. Yeah, I think that if you're not used to using one of these machines, um, you'd have a little hard time <laughs> moving it. I guess I'm so used to it, I never think about it anymore. But the key is the balance balance it uh, on that center point and it, uh, it glides around and very very easy machines and mine's easier than most because of the way it's made with its uh, off center motor which counteracts torque you see so uh, the motor's not in the middle it's over to one side and up to the front. So the actual weight center on the bottom of the machine is right there. But when the machine runs, it uh, kind of, because the way the torque works, it sort of actually balances the, the weight in the center while it's running. So it's kind of interesting. It's not the only type they're not the only ones that, uh, this manufacturer is not the only, only one that make a machine like that. Taskies are, are like that. Um, the older advances were. Uh, usually these machines that are like that are belt driven. And this is a belt driven machine. So there's no actual transmission. The uh, reduction uh, of the motor speed, which is about 7, 1750, it reduced down to 180 RPM for this particular machine. I believe it's 180 anyway. Um, anyway, it's um, done with a, uh, it's like a pulley system in there with uh, different sized pulleys. And so the center pulley, which is the drive shaft of the motor, is very small. And then the pulley underneath the uh, 
drive mechanism for the pad is actually quite large. So it reduces the uh, speed but multiplies the torque. So the motor runs at 1750 and the outer or the, and the natural drive block around moves around at uh, about 180 but it has a lot of torque. This is a one and a half horsepower motor, dual capacitor, and it only runs on nine amps, which is one of the reasons that makes this thing such an excellent choice for residential primarily. Um, you can certainly use it for whatever, but when it comes to residential, uh, blowing, popping breakers is not uncommon with a rotary because a lot of them are rated 12 to 15 amps. Some are even rated at 20 amps, actually. That would be for, you know, industrial use only. But uh, you don't want that. Uh, 15 amps is really pushing it. You can be done, and I've run machines like that, but if there's going to be a weak breaker anywhere, you'll find it. Hmm. Carpet is turning, turning out very well. Stains are all coming out. Um, so, uh, just about done this room, and this is all I'm going to film today. Um, I won't record any of the other rooms. I just really wanted to focus on uh, just kind of explaining the basics of running a rotary, you know, rotary 101. I can understand why it would be difficult. Oh, here's a little trick, by the way. So I'm, I'm holding my hand right here, and I'm just sort of walking along. And you can do the same thing the other way, if you want. You can kind of... The machine just goes... It's actually going to the left. I'm walking sort of sideways. Very easy. And you can walk. You can walk sideways. I'm walking sideways. See? Sideways. Go back. That's actually a really easy way to do it. I don't usually do it that way, but if I was doing, say, open... Big wide open hallways in a condo or whatever... Yeah, you can do that. And you can really fly. That's actually um, the way to really move with one of these machines. You kind of walk. You walk beside it. But if you want to get used to it, one good way to do it is just to find a smooth cement floor and throw a pad underneath it. And uh, yeah, just practice. Fiddle around with it. Do a little dance. <coughs> You find it, you'll pick up pretty quick. You become an expert, you'll be able to do, you know, one-handed stuff very easily. All right, I'm going to let you go now.